Hello, and welcome back to Let's Pre Ghost Thief. We are back with another fan mission from the Thief 1 Anniversary Contest. This one is Lost Among the Forsaken by Dr. K, the uh, well-known author of the Roxburgh missions and many others. One of my favorite authors, this. And um, although my priority right now is T2X and Thief 2, I did ghost this about a month and a half ago, I think. And since it's uh, so recent, I remember most of the details from it, so I wanted to record it while I still remembered it. Uh, and of course, I would remember it years from now too, but uh, the more details I can recall, the better narration it will be and the smoother the gameplay will be. So that's why I usually try to record them as soon as I can after having ghosted it and therefore prepared it. So we're going to play this one today. We're going to play on Expert. And um, there isn't a briefing, but there is in the info file a little bit of a, a story, backstory on this. So I'm going to read that before we get into the objectives. Last night, Cuddy asked me to find Heron, one of his informants who recently disappeared into the sealed quarter. He used to work for a group of thieves who operate at the south border of the wall. He was there to gather information about various guilds and irregular activities in town, and he might have found something too dangerous to handle. However, a few days earlier, he told Cuddy about Medwick Tower, a collapsed building in Lower Hillrim, which uncovered ancient catacombs in its fall and he seemed rather obsessed with the right arm of St. Lucard, supposedly hidden down there. If I didn't know Cuddy better, I'd say he's more interested in this holy artifact rather than the well-being of Heron. The district of the city was deserted years ago, walled off after an infamous mass in a cathedral. Lower Hillrim is located far enough from it at the southwest corner of the sealed quarter. I've only heard wild tales about the place what happened half a century ago. This is a great opportunity to confirm the truth out of these rumors and to find valuable goods people left behind. An associate of mine found an old map of the district for me. Probably not accurate anymore, but that'll do. I'll have to find my way in through the wall following Cuddy's directions and make my way through the ruins to the north. If Heron is still alive and the relic is real, I'll find both of them near Medwick Tower. So I tried to put on my Garrett story voice there, I guess. Never done any voice acting, so uh, don't scrutinize me, too, scrutinize me too bad for that. So basically, uh, we have to... The sealed quarter has a hidden entry point at the southeast, near the district, which was known as Lower Hillrem. Or, yeah, I assume this is Hillrem. Find it and enter the sealed quarter. Words from Bright Cobble tell about some Hammerites uh, catacombs which were recently discovered near Medwick Tower. According to rumors, this will be the resting place of a holy artifact, the right arm of St. Lucard. Find it and make it yours. Cuddy doesn't have much hope, but he wants you to find Heron while you're at it, and bring him back if he's still alive. This is quite an opportunity you were given. Let's take advantage of it. Steal at least 2,700 worth of valuables. The place is dangerous enough. There's no need to attract attention. Don't kill any humans. Once you've found everything you were looking for, get out of the sealed quarter alive. So, this mission can actually be perfect Supreme Ghosted, which is pretty rare, uh, especially for uh, DRK's missions, because he tends to make them quite difficult. So since it's possible, I will take this rather slow and meticulously, because I don't want any uh, alerts that I don't detect. So if I'm unsure, I will probably reload, maybe a little bit more than usual. Um, so hopefully that doesn't mean it becomes more tedious, but I will go a little bit more uh, detail to works here than I maybe normally do. As usual, I will show you everything in the mission. I will show you all the items, the readables, and all that. Um, and I will take a specific route through the mission that avoids backtracking too much and avoids triggering quite a few extra AI around the map. There's um, some zombies and um, yeah, primarily that, some, some enemies that will trigger once we take the main objective. So we will do that as late in the mission and in the run as we possibly can. Let's see. 
Now, there is a contract here that we can buy for 50 that will give us an extra objective if we read it in the mission. And um, I will go ahead and buy that right now and then I will restart because I just want to read it to you and show what happens. So we will go ahead and buy that, but nothing else here should be necessary. We have two rope arrows. We're going to need one or I'm going to probably need both or use both of them, but we don't need a third. But uh, if you are ghosting and um, buy equipment, then I probably would buy an extra rope arrow and maybe um, a couple of moss arrows and water arrows. You have money for that, so that's probably what I would use here. Yeah, so let's read that contract real quick. I shall be brief. I am a collector of various treasures and other relics from the glorious reign of Baron Fleming. As you probably know, after the Great Fire of 798 and the scandals following the events of the Sealed Quarter, the scarce remnants from this period are either lost or concealed deep within the vaults of the Hamrite Order and the Barony, out of reach of people like me. Fortunately, the Sealed Quarter remains mostly untouched by the evolution of society and offers me the best option today for gathering objects from this recent past. Therefore, I should pay you a generous amount for every valuable historical object you should find. Many thanks for your prompt compliance with this request, Messer Gerard S. Engham. NG Ham, maybe. So that brings an extra objective, find six relics from Baron Fleming's reign. And that is available on all difficulties, and I believe on normal it requires two, and on hard it requires four, and then expert six. There are eight in total. Um, now, those objects are still there, even if you don't read or buy this contract, they're still in the mission, um, and you can still pick them up, I believe, I think so, but they don't count for anything. And even now, once we have the objective, they are not worth loot, even though he said he was going to pay us, that is not a part of the lower total count, so the loot count doesn't change, depending on if we have this objective or not. But I will show you all eight, and it is possible to take all eight of those items uh, for Supreme. So, um, I obviously will not do that because I don't want to buy that item. Now, I'm not really sure if this contract had been free, because you can't implement optional objectives in Thief 1. So if this was the way the author did it, by making a free contract that you could buy and read if you wanted to, um, that would make it an optional objective because you don't have to trigger it if you don't want to. Um, th would that mean that getting the contract would be a supreme bust or not? Because the rules say that you don't, you're not allowed to purchase anything. No purchases from the loadout screen. So if you are getting it for free, you're not purchasing it, right? So would free items here be a bust to Supreme or not? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I don't think I've ever thought about that or had that question pop up, but I guess that could be a question for you guys. What do you think? Because um, it wouldn't be a purchase, right? If somebody comes to your door and offers something to you for free, do you want to take it? You know, would that be a Supreme bust? I don't know. I would probably say not. Anyway doesn't matter for our playthrough but so let us make a real save quick save and let's look at our map so there is only um, one map of the street layout uh, it's split into two so this is the southern section and this does not show the streets where we are at as we start the mission. We're starting above ground and then we have to go into the sealed quarter. So once we enter the sealed quarter, um, we enter uh, we enter here and then we have to go through some buildings and we come out into the actual sealed quarter here. There's a bridge here. This, uh, no, wait, no. We come out here actually. 
Um, it says entry point, and then it looks like the arrow was pointing here. I remember when I saw this map the first time, I was very confused as to where we came out. But no, it just these arrows are just showing that we're coming out from the south. But this is where we're actually emerging. So we are coming out from a Thieves' Den right here. And not when we start the mission, but after a little bit. And we come out onto a bridge that is right here. This is a bridge. The blue is a canal that is actually filled with water. Uh, this is an old um, wash-looking region. Uh, so I always thought that there used to be water in there. But no, the water is below this area. So this is where we actually will emerge in the sealed quarter. And I am uh, I was a little bit disappointed when I played the mission the first time that some parts of this street layout isn't accessible. It's actually cut off right here and up to here and over on the, to the east. So this whole section here is not available to us. So we can only go to the west of that. So there's an Aberton Street area here. These gear icons are power stations. Um, there's also an underground sewage system that is not shown on the map. And then there are certain locations around the city that will help us as sort of landmarks. Um, there, it, it is a very non-linear map, which is great for cities. I would almost say this is a an amped up version of the Honor Cathedral. So, and as you probably know, I'm not a big fan of that mission, uh, but this is a huge step up. So this is maybe what I wish the Honor Cathedral was, or if it had been designed like this. But they had limitations in Old Ark, how intricate they could make city design. So that that's no, no fault on the Looking Glass uh, crew there. Um, Ald Waterway, that is a location here in the middle. Um, so there is a, a canal here, so I'm sure that that's referring to the street that goes by the canal. Um, there is underground and above ground. There is some rooftop activity, not too much, but you can go through a lot of buildings to move around the map. There's another power station here. And the next section is then north. So this Eldridge Street that you see here is right here. So there's a slight overlap. So this um, this area of the map we can get into except for this section. We cannot go east of the stables. McDermott Pit we don't have available. We can't go here and the old mill is not accessible either. But, but everything else besides that is available. So much of it is is accessible, but I did try so hard to get into this area on my first playthrough. I thought there was, since there's like a pub here, there's a Barrow's End and all that is uh, marked on the map, and there's a power station here too. I thought that you could get into this area somehow, but you can't. I thought that you were supposed to end in this area, but you have to go all the way back and up to the streets again. Okay, enough chatter. Now there's a conversation we're going to listen to right at the beginning from two guards that you can't actually see or interact with up here. <coughs> you can also take a piece of loot there. And then he came out of nowhere and called me a truther. What? You mean a taffer, right? No, he did say truther. Daryl heard it too. What the hell is a truther? Hell if I know. Some kind of trout, maybe? I've been thinking about it for days now. It makes no sense. <laughs> I swear these pagans sometimes. Did you give him a good thrashing? <laughs> nah. Happened too quick. He ran off into the woods as soon as he said the word. It took me a while to understand what happened, but I must say it gave me a good laugh. <laughs> <coughs> what the hell is a truther anyway? So, the alert sounds that you're hearing is just a part of the a the ambience. It's it's not me getting detected here. These double doors we have to pick. Now that 
loot item we took, the gold goblet, worth 25. Uh, if you don't get it on your way down into the sealed quarter, I don't think you actually can get that item. Because the mission ends once you get into this room. So I don't think you can get up there and mantle that that lamppost and actually retrieve that piece before the mission ends. I'm in here. This one you can get to. If you miss it on the first way down. So that's a gold candlestick worth 50. Try not to push those barrels too much. All right. So down here we are completely safe. This is the place, the entry point to the sealed quarter. I better be careful now. So this is uh, X marks the entrance. Can't do anything else here. It's just a, sort of an abandoned sewer section. So these two first, the doors and this gate are pickable. We have to pick them. I don't like to pick locks if I don't have to, and there are a couple of of those instances in this mission. <laughs> okay, so we're in some kind of thieves' quarters here. Read this. Wayne, Leowell. I have a meeting tonight with Monsiger and some other people regarding the Scrappers, Lady Harrington, and the situation with Heron. There might be some trouble with, with uh, Fiennes, or Fines, I'm not sure how you pronounce that name, Fins, coming our way. I take Anson with me. Paxter went to warn our friends of Reuben Street, and Marin is on his way. You better find Heron quick before the situation gets even worse. I won't take responsibility for your lack of judgment, Oswin. So, we always get, uh, or already get a lot of names here into the activities in the Thieves Guild, or the underground mob. So, I'm not sure wh who all of these people are supposed to be. Obviously, Heron is the one we're looking for, is the informant. The Scrappers are, um, are in Coghill, which is the scrapyard, essentially. They pick up uh, items from around the city and, and, and sell it or use it. Um, and a couple of these names we will hear, hear about later, but not all of them. So these two are also pickable, and we also have to pick these open. Guess there's loot inside here. Nothing we can do here, except <laughs> get a bottle of wine up on the rafter. to pick the lock on the next one, too. And we have to pick the lock on this, because this has loot. We already have five lock pick or pick, yeah, lock picks here. So that was worth 100 total, 225, and then there is a readable here. Anson, they forgot to tell you, but there's always an exception to the rules. Case in point, you were asked to let nobody that's not a friend come here. However, if it looks like silent, tall men wearing dark clo cloaks and hoods, you're supposed to let them pass without asking questions. Long story short, it's thanks to them we're not eating uh, rat stew, as they always leave us a big bag of yellow oinkers each time they're back from whatever they're doing in there. Monsiger doesn't need to know anything about this, else he'll want to share or worse like order us to follow them. Last time someone did that, the following morning we found something we wished we didn't see. I know, it sounds scary, but remember something, money does not stink, especially if you can buy enough tripes to eat meat every day here. Okay, so there's some people in cloaks that are coming by. Here is a fireplace with a fire arrow. And then down 
here, there are three switches. Two of them operate lights. I think the third one... I'm not sure what the third one does. <sighs> but two of them you can turn off lights with. Now, of course... Playing Supreme, we're not allowed to do that. Tried to steal some coils from a power station near Ruben Street, and one of them fried on the spot. <laughs> That'll teach him. <laughs> Wish I could have seen it. So, what should we do about Heron? I don't know, but I ain't going after him no matter what they say. That bloody coward pissed his pants at the sight of a corpse, let alone an undead, and now he runs away to hide himself in the sealed quarter. Yeah, there's something wrong, I'm telling you. I still can't believe Oswin lashed on us. Like twas our fault. I'd be tempted to give him a taste of me own sword if Marin weren't around. That pox-ridden tapper. I don't like it. It doesn't feel right. Might be the boy knew something we don't. Maybe it's us that ought to run. <laughs> okay. So those two thieves there were talking about Heron, how he had run into the sealed quarter. And uh, Oswin was the one that had contacted them about this matter. So they're a little bit scared that it was their fault that he actually ran, because he got scared of something. So we have to sneak by them. We should be safe here. I'm going to make a real save real quick. This can be a little bit tricky. There are three things to read in that room that they are in, and there's a key, and there are two pieces of loot that we need to take. There's some equipment too, but we don't have to worry about that. Let's read that first. 29th, Frymas, 834. Messer Leofric Dennis. Stable accident, died a few hours ago, from Grimstock. I'll send Marin for more info. Third, Arcanum, 834. Claude Black and Cletus Black, sleep owners. Killed in their sleep. Slit throats, looked like the work of the Glassmakers Guild. Guy paid a hefty price, so I won't ask any further this time. Ninth, Arcanum, 834. Burr Little Thumbs, drowned. Can't tell when, it was unbearable. Brought by some... Uh, worm biters from Green Bay. What's wrong with them? They pulled him from the sea and brought him all the way here. 17th Arcanum, 834. Gary Makepeace, Hayes. Strangled, well-known scam artist. Probably pissed off the wrong lord. Good riddance, I guess. 18th Arcanum, 834. Unknown woman. No info whatsoever. Salpeters. They remained silent, but forgot to hide the sigils on their jackets. Marin on his way, amateurs. 21st Arcanum 834, Captain Seward uh, Deacons. Lost a duel to Duchess Sh Shambridge's captain of the guard three days ago. Something fishy, or else they wouldn't require our services. He woke up sooner than expected. I almost lost Wayne. They paid twice the price for that. So, woke up then means obviously that he turned into a zombie for some reason. 26th Arcanum, 834, some beggar, killed by Marin on the way out. We must be more cautious. Now I'll have to figure out if it was morbid curiosity or if he spied on us. Nice reference there to previous mission. We also had a reference to Monsiger from Endless Rain. And I believe he also was mentioned in the Chalice of Souls campaign. 6th Mo Monoth, month, 834, Manfred Chansey, stabbed multiple times yesterday. Dimwits working for Donahue art, Donahue's art dealers. They found him, dying in the street as he left Suchime. It took us some efforts to keep a straight face. So, Manfred Chansey I've heard about before. And Suchime as well. It's an area of town. Tenth month, 834. Lady Genevieve Harrington. A tough one. Probably involves the last of Broderick's men. It's going to bring some chaos among the nobility. At least I know the better. The least I know the better. On second thought, I might have to tell Monsiger about her. Apparently she had a valuable ring on her. Could be evidence for a crime. None of my concern, but I should have been more thorough. Could have been a nice bonus for my trouble. Okay, nothing else here. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to try it there. <coughs> Keep an eye out for scrappers. A few of these swindlers were seen near Reuben Street a couple of days ago. And Paxter is dead. Certain some of them still hang around Tristane Alley up north. Either uh, fines allowed them to enter the sealed section, or they found a way to sneak in there on their own. Whatever the case, we can't let them see us, or else fines will find out about our business. Trust me, if that happens, you Taffers would rather get caught by hammers and sent to Cragscleft before Marin hears about this. Fines will be the least of your worries. If things turn bad, you'd better use powder kegs to get rid of these scoundrels. Well, you could use them to blow yourself all over the district for all I care, Oswald. <coughs> Department of Public Works, work order. Old quarter, sealed section, former lower hill run. The power grid control boxes are located in the old public workstation of Coghill Market, Aberton Street, Ferrier Lane and Ald Waterway. Directive 24S121.4. It's important that all public workstations be marked on the map with the gear icon. It is important that all public workstations be locked at all times to avoid damage. If access is needed, contact the Census Bureau for ap uh, approbation and to, give, uh, and to be given a spare key. Permanent emergency lights are added to the closed vicinity of all the stations. They are to act as landmarks and ease further ac future access. Addendum. Multiple anomalies in the station of Ferrier Lane. Some activities were reported, despite the rough state of the machines and the abandonment of the place. Avoid the station until further notice. So Coggill Market, Aberton, Ferrier, and Ald Waterway. So there are four public workstations then. Aberton, uh, Ald Waterway, uh, Coghill, and Ferrier Lane up here. So the one in the Old Mill and the one here north on Barrows End are not mentioned. So maybe that is indicating that those areas are not going to be possible to access. Hey, I've got you. So I don't know if I can actually get back here. Okay, good. <clears throat> so that patroller in there has three... Oh. So the guy is stationed right outside the door. And... <coughs> He makes a little hunt maneuver as a scripted part. So we got two stacks of copper coins worth seven. So total 232. And we got the power station's key. That we are going to need because we need to access the first power station. And you have to get up here in order not to get spotted by that thief when he comes back. And up here, conveniently, there is another gold goblet. Very nicely hidden one. Okay. So we can still get spotted through those doors by the patrolling thief. So we are obviously going to pay attention to that. Let's make another real save. I will make quite a few. Now we're going to jump across here. So yeah, we are. So this is where they get... You can jump straight onto the ladder here. Oh. I don't know why I can't jump here. I think I'm stepping maybe on one of those. So do you see that this is the bridge area that is shown right here, and it's broken. So down below is this location, and now we are on the um, walkway just to the north of this. I think this is north at least, yeah. So you see, while we're up here, we have to be careful with those two thieves. So 
this is the door we have to get into next. Some kind of old shop or something like that. Two statues in here. And a pickable money box. a stack of gold coins worth 25, total 362. Yeah, see somebody, he saw me there. You heard that? Be super careful here from a distance. So these lights are now off. They will turn on once uh, we turn on the power station. Okay. So in this building, no, there's, there's. I guess I'll need to open it from the power station nearby. It's a locked uh, gate here. Mantling is not registered as movement for enemies. So mantling isn't uh, dangerous. We're going to head in here, actually. Right now. Small building. There's two moss arrows in the ceiling. And there is... Um, seems like this collapse has killed somebody, but he has a ring. Or he. <laughs> the skeleton had a ring on his finger, I assume. Here there's also an artifact. Artifact was worth 20, the ring 100, total 482. That was extremely loud. It's better to do something like that, maybe, I'm not sure. I, I can't tell if those guards are actually seeing me or not. This is... Yeah. I can't... I can't uh, crouch here. That's the problem. We need to be able to jump or land. This is frustrating. Uh, probably for you as much as it is for me, but... Yeah. Man. Like there's no speed that will make that will make me actually drop down a little bit more quietly here. Yeah, I I can't and I can't even
It's it's just a, a complication with the engine, really, because if Garrett can't get a foothold, then you cannot crouch, and if you can't crouch, you cannot descend properly. You cannot lower yourself properly. There. Now we drop down to the bottom here. So here's a bunch of corpses. And uh, one of the corpses, this woman, has the ring that was talked about in the readable. That's worth 100, total 582. So this is where they get rid of compromising evidence. I guess so. Yeah. I know a few wardens who would pay a good price to know about that. Okay, so that wasn't... Didn't trigger your first load. That was only wood, but still, it's annoying. Mathos. The city council is deeply grateful for the efforts of your men in the construction of the Great Wall and Lower Hillrem. Do not surrender the fati to fatigue, for your work is of the greatest urgency. Both Gilleth's section of the wall and yours remain fragile, but everything goes as expected, and it is only a matter of time before we regain our city. Yandros is in, and his men... Uh, nice. Yandros. And his men made great progress, so much so they do not need protection anymore. Therefore, we have sent their guards to accompany your men, as well as a contingent of Hammerites to heal your wounded and bless your efforts. Upon completion of the wall, you shall inherit the title as promised, and all the workers shall receive each an acre of good land as a reward from Baron Fleming. The city counts on you. Do not fail us in our hour of need. Lord Whitsimmon, Lord Mayor of the Old Quarter. So this is then before the accident. Get another real set here. So there's one more piece of loot that we have to get before we move on. And it's up here, and the easiest way to get that is probably to... Oh. It's difficult to get up here, so... a gold candlestick up here worth 50 total 632 that we cannot have no way I wonder if we can just drop down here because it's no it's sloped but sloped ground or water, you can pretty much drop from any height. So now we're heading west. And here is our first uh, public workstation. Here we go. This uh, footlocker here is Empty. And there is a another notice. That's exactly the same one we just read. And then there is a um, a control panel. And if we we have to flip that, uh, there's no way to proceed if we don't flip that. It doesn't bust supreme, but what it does do, it actually opens three different gates, or maybe even four. The one above we just saw earlier was closed, that opened. And then we're gonna take a trip down into the... I don't know why I can't... I am crouching, creeping, 
And when I press run, I should be able to go without making a clang. I don't know why I'm not doing that right now. That is strange. Anyway. We're going to head down into the sewers. And I'm going to show you around down here. Save it, but I'm not going to save when we get into the sewers. So that is another door that is possible to open with the power station key. So now we get into the sewers. This is a dead end. Right here. This is a dead end. There's nothing in this room. And this takes us up to the bridge earlier that we couldn't jump on to because it makes too much noise. So this is the gate that opened as well with that. With operating that mechanism. Another dead end or it's caved in. So we're really pretty much forced in this direction here. Here you see there is a zombie, sleeping zombie. So go this direction. And then we are pretty much coming to the other side of that zombie, so this is just one way, and this is a dead end, so this is the only place we can go if we chose that way. And here, <coughs> Now, we have actually gotten to Coghill. So we are actually coming up from the sewers in Coghill, Coghill Market, right here. However, this door is pickable. And um, although you can use that entry to Coghill, it is not an entry I want to use. Because you can't lock this door, and you can finish the whole mission without ever picking this lock. So that I'm going to skip. And that was the only way we could go this direction. That, well, let's actually take a look at this area. So there's a patrolling zombie here. Wait for him to pass. Dead end right here, so this is the only way we can go if we choose to pass that zombie. So now we get to the sewers. So now we have actually arrived right here. So we are under ground right here. So we enter the power station here, we've walked all the way through the streets and come out way over here. And this was the other exit. So that's another possible option. 
So I just want to so show you how extensive this sewer system is. I'm not going to use the sewers now. I don't care about that alert right now. Can head back here? No, not this way. That'd make it right here. this I already showed you. Okay. There is on one other way uh, you can take that gets you over to this power station. But I'll show you that from the other side, because I'm going to go down there. But I'm not going to use any of those directions now. I just wanted to show you the network of systems down there. <laughs> So when we leave, we have to make sure that we turn off the lights again and therefore close those gates and of course also return the power station key and make sure that this is locked. We're going to head here. That's west. <clears throat> Public proclamation by Lord Whitsam. Lord Mayor of the Old Quarter with the benediction of Baron Fleming in the 16th year of his reign. Once in a lifetime opportunity, let it be known that Baron Fleming, in his utmost generosity, allows the district of Lower Hillrum to erect a magnificent rampart that will protect it from the flood and shame the silver wall of Zurich. Volunteers must apply to the local bailiff or to Mathos Stonemason Guild. Generous tax cuts and compensation will be given as rewards upon completion. And a second one. Public proclamation by Lord Whitsimmon, Lord Mayor of the Old Quarter, with the benediction of Baron Fleming in the 16th year of his reign. Beware of the, of the vine flu. The citizens of the district of Lower Hillrem are earnestly advised to respect the curfew in place in order to stop the spreading of the dangerous uh, paganic disease. The inhabitants are asked to report any trouble or symptom to the local St. Lucar Church for healing and salvation. Okay. Now we can continue by heading in here. And I think there is a gate that also would have been closed here that we opened. So it wouldn't have been possible for us to get to this location. We have a silver nugget worth 15. Did I close that one down there? Yes, I did. Here's a garden with a sleeping zombie. We can get past him, but it's a little bit difficult. Now we are in what we can call the Sullen's Gate area. 
or no, we're actually not that far west. We're the garden that we're looking into is right here, so we're standing just to the south of it. Now there is what looks like an astrologer right nearby. And that's in here. So here is one of the relic objects, and that is this one. That's an ancient chisel. So that counts as one of the eight. We found one of those now. I'm not going to take it because it's not... It's not required for Supreme. So now we are looking down onto Ald Waterway. And this is actually where the... Where the gate was, right here, that we couldn't open earlier. Gonna head down here. Here's a couple of water arrows. for him to pass. There are a total of seven water arrows spread around the flooded areas of this alley. So we are now uh, stationed right here and the zombie that you hear walking this direction. Uh. Oh, I thought he continued uh. on his path. Here's two moss arrows. Here's three more water arrows. And up here there are four more water arrows. However, when you go into this area, there is a second zombie that spawns. So, you don't want to go into that little alley. So there are certain areas in this mission where if you know where to go or not go, you can avoid triggering certain um, 
certain patrollers. These are the two same readables that we just read. So we are heading up towards Eldridge Street now. So we're waiting right here, and we're going to head into this area to the left, just north of that sleeping zombie we saw in the garden upstairs. Here's the balcony. That's the public workstation right there. So, we can open the door to this building. In here, there's a letter in the fireplace. Robert John Marmaduke. The Sir requested that we take all measures to preserve his family's legacy and ordered all the servants to aid in the removal of all the manor's valuables that can be saved. While I won't discuss the Sir's wishes, I fear some of the servants of less than high morales will try to smuggle food or resources. This means you are expected to search and escort the serfs off the premises once their task is finished. Tell them that any, any attempt to profit from the dire situation we're in will result in hanging, as per noble law. Also, let it be known that the Sir asked me to retrieve what's left in his secret cellar, but forgot to tell me exactly where it is and how to open it. That means one of you has to fetch a poleaxe and help me find this bloody room. Captain. So it seems, a poleaxe I assume means that it's an attic pole that you can open a, a secret attic, but they've got that wrong. It's not, uh, or I assume that's what a poleaxe means. Or maybe they think they're going to chop down the door or something to enter it, I'm not sure. Maybe they think it's in here. Anyway, the secret cellar is not there at all, it's back behind here. This crate we're actually going to need. Doesn't count as a secret, but it's here. I don't mind if I do. I don't mind either, to be honest with you. So in here, there are six bottles of wine. One, two, three. Six, there is a gold vase. There's four goblets. There is a gold candlestick. So that was worth 510, so we should have 1207 now. Now, when we open this and go in there, we're going to close it. There's another sleeping zombie that spawns out here. Now, that scared the living daylights out of me when I started, when I played this mission the first time. Because I went back out here and needed me to look for it. And then I went over here and it rose up and made an awful noise. It makes a different noise too than normally. I'll show you. <laughs> And it started doing that, and I jumped. I don't think I've jumped that much in a long time. So, well done, Dr. K. <sighs> well done, indeed. <sighs> Man, I'm having a hard time today. <sighs> there. So we are now back from the other the other direction to this sleeping zombie. So we are going to have to get his purse. Now, the trick about zombies is that sleeping is that they cannot... 
They cannot see you or hear you. They only alert to your presence at their level. So it's proximity. But it's only at their level. So if we use a crate and do this, you can take the purse pretty easily. That was worth 100. And that crate was pretty conveniently placed in the cellar of this building anyway, so way to go. That was worth 100, total 1227. No, it was not, it was worth 20. Not 100. <laughs> and there is another purse exactly like that on a sleeping zombie in the sewers right below this public workstation, so. We're gonna head down there next and then return the crate right afterwards. Down here it is. Okay, can we get back up again there? We have another piece of. We have another rope, so. No worries. Uh, this is another door that unlocks to the key that we have. Zombie is right here. So if you don't, if you fall down next to the crate, then you can't do it. So that was also worth 20, total 1247. I'm just gonna show you where this actually ends up leading to. Yeah, there's a zombie floating here, and the way to get around that is just to go underneath it. Then it won't alert you because it doesn't see you. It's only proximity at their level. Or at its level. Oh, that's right. That's how you get to this area. So we were here. Remember that? I just forgot that you can access it this way. In fact, that's the only way to get to it. We did not lock any door here, right? No, that was up here. So that piece of loot is actually the only piece of loot there is in the entire sewer section. Other than that, the sewers is just to relocate. Okay. Well. <laughs> Let's do that then instead. Great. So there. To close this door. There. Okay. 12.47, that's what we should have. Okay, now if we move around here. Uh. Should be able to go around there. Look 
like that. There's a door in sort of a hidden little garden here. So we're now... This is the garden. We're just northwest of that or above the public workstation. We have to pick the lock on this door. It sounds like there's a haunt inside, but there's not. Like I said before, I am playing on a new laptop. Most of these recordings are done on that now. And the controls... I don't know. There's something about it. It's Windows 10. Maybe that's got something to do with it. I'm not sure. I've always played on Windows 7. But, like, here, I can't crouch. And then, even when I walk right now, I get a clang every single time. Even when I make... See what I'm doing right now? Just tapping the walk button, and I'm getting clangs. If anybody knows how to get rid of that, please tell me. So it's got nothing to do with the mouse, because I'm not moving the mouse right now. I used to be able to do, like, quick bursts where I would walk while crouching without making any noise. I can't do that now. Anyway, here is a gold candlestick, and this is what's called Hillrem Glasses. So that's the second relic that you can take out of the six that are needed. Controllers up on the next level, it's not here. So we're now headed, heading into a hole in the wall here. And this is actually the castle. So we're headed into Eldridge Castle right now. This castle I thought was going to be a big, cool interior. It only has two floors and one hallway in each. So it's a little bit smaller than what maybe the map makes it out to look like. But anyway, this is some kind of a prison area. Sell one. Eat Tibbets for multiple murders adjudged to the gallows. Sell two. Empty. Sell three. Spare Boot Haggard for robbing Messer K. Guerin adjudged to the pillory. Sell four. Messer K. Guerin for assaulting Spare Boot. <laughs> okay, so those two are obviously there because of each other. Haggard adjudged to the pillory. Sell five. A. Meredith for obscene behavior spitting on Lady Manderley. Awaiting transfer to Crag's left. Note, upon Lord Whitsimmons' request, all able working prisoners are to be sent to Mathos Stonemason Guild. All the garrisons in the Lower Hillrim are requisi requisitioned. Um, they are to be sent as reinforcements to Bright Cobble and Grimstock. By the builder, the city has gone mad. Yeah, looks like it. All these are empty. Except for if you go into the last one, which has some blood in it. Then it looks like somebody is, or sounds like somebody's walking away, but there isn't anything. It's probably just um, an invisible person that is just scripted to go. So we're going to visit the upper floors too. This is a sleeping zombie that is actually sitting. Let's take a look out here first. This is a window out to Medwick Tower. Medwick Tower, or what's left of it. I may find something valuable among the ruins. So here we have Medwick Tower. Here we're going to spend some time later on. That's one of the last places we're going to go. Here you can see a flaming spirit in that tower, which you can't actually go to. But the tower itself is the ruins you see in the front. It's fallen over. It's in three or four pieces. I think what is the top of it, you can see sort of leaning over in the background there. And a couple of windows that are broken and all that. So this is a cool area. Very intense, but we're not going to stay there right now. we got to be careful not to alert that flaming spirit once we are there. We're going to go past here. Here's a ring. A very small ring. This has, I believe, three broaded arrows. 
and I think there is a healing potion here as well, and I think there's a rope arrow in the other one in here. But yeah, we're not going to spend some more, more time here. There isn't anything else to see in this castle. That's it. a cool place because this location here is one place where you don't have to visit there's no loot there's nothing you know no objectives or anything like that it's just a hidden place with one readable so this is something that you easily can miss and never know about it which i actually think is cool because it rewards those that are a little bit extra into the searching element and uh, try to get into every single location and get uh, as full of the immersive story as they can so let's read this heron I doubt you'll ever read this letter, but taff it. I won't be able to help you get out of Cuddy's grasp. I've been waiting for days now. You took too long. I think there's some creature in the street, something else. It knows where I am. It's hunting me. I can feel it in my guts. I'll make a run for it. I'll give you whatever info I gathered. The catacombs are west of the collapsed tower and Farrier Lane, a bit north from here. There's that weird door I can't seem to open, and something odd with these sarcophaguses. Might be there's a link, but I couldn't find it in time. I told you it was a bad idea from the start, but there's no way back now. If I make it out alive, I'll wait for you at the uh, Brass Goose as usual. I hope we'll meet again, pal. So this is a papyrus that you can pick up, which usually means that it has some valuable information because you should be able to bring it with you and refer to it later. It's not necessary to be able to finish the mission, but it's good information to have. Okay, it's coming back, so we will just wait for it to to go away again. So it said that there were some catacombs west of the tower, so we looked at the tower, so west of that. And there was some sort of door that wasn't able to open. I love the creepy noises here. You can't get into this place. You kind of just wish that you could, but you can't. Okay. Here is a crate with hidden loot underneath. There's a lot of stuff here. Gold nugget. Three silver coins. Two copper coins. Two gold coins. There's actually a readable later on that gives a hint to where that is. To where this is located. So I didn't find it until after I read that. So for me, that was kind of cool. Artifact worth twenty total sixteen thirteen, and there is a sapphire vase here. That is another relic, so that's a third one. I think he turns around. Indeed. This should be dark enough, shouldn't it? I think so. So if he heads west now, we should be good to go. Uh, 
So when we are done with everything and I've gotten our main objective, the streets will be a little bit more cramped. There's going to be a stationary zombie here, for example. So passing this street is going to be impossible. And here, there's a needle area. There's a statue right here, very well hidden. But I did find, I found all the loot in this mission. I got a hint for one of them. There's only one piece of loot I was missing. And I got a hint to get that. It was a ring, a very difficult ring to find. So I'll show you that once we get to it. See, so we are going to head into Cog Hill now. We have now moved east on Eldritch and then north, and now we are at the southern end of Tristane Alley. Or actually, we're on where we move, moved over towards Grime Row right now. So we are right between those two streets. So one street that goes up here, and there's the street around Cog Hill, isn't that? big, but you can go underneath here to get to the stables. There's a patrolling zombie that's going to come right here. That has a purse. There's another piece of loot up there. Could maybe hear some people too. The scrappers are close by. That other zombie too here is sleeping. Let me show you here. This is an area you can get to from the sewers that I showed you earlier. Yeah. You can't mantle back up there, but you can get here from the sewers. So there's a lot of opportunity for non-linear, uh, multiple passageways, stuff like that in this mission. Oh, you see that? It gave a first alert because I got close to it. Even though you're on the other side of the wall, it can alert like that. So we're now outside Cog Hill. So there, that window there, you, is another entrance into Cog Hill. <sighs> I guess we gotta use a, a rope here. This is just a roof with a fire arrow, a loaf, a cheese, and an apple. But there's nothing else of interest up here, but it's a cool place to visit. So 
So now we're heading into uh, an entrance to Coghill. There are uh, four entrances into Coghill Market and Depot. And only two of them can be taken. There's five entrances. Two out of five can be taken. This is one, and the one that I showed you down there is another one. That window. So we're going to listen to a conversation right now. Oh, I hate this place. The mold gives me a hard time breathing, the rust catches all my gear, and the stench is unbearable. Yeah, you'll get used to it. No one likes this place, but remember, you didn't have much choice like the rest of us. Well, I did have a choice. This or Knavesbury. I knew I should have gone to Lumen instead. Say, have you heard about the catacombs they found out near the Fallen Tower? Medlick Tower? Stop. I know what you're thinking. It's not worth it. Oh, don't be a pansy now. Who knows what riches await us down there? Could be our way out of this accursed place. Have you seen what happened in the church? I'm telling you, this street's lost to the trickster himself. And I ain't going nowhere near it. A tower this size doesn't collapse on its own. And if no one knew about these catacombs before, it must be for a good reason. If you're fool enough to go back there, it'll be without me. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Scrappers. <sighs> so much for an abandoned place. I didn't know they could leave Bright Cobble to operate somewhere else. <clears throat> okay, so it seems like... Um, there has been a scrapyard at Bright Cobble, but then some of them have gone rogue, maybe, and then established a new scrapyard here, because, as one readable previously said, they have sought out opportunities to get a bunch of uh, trinkets around town or old uh, material that they can use for scraps, and they have then developed a market here. But that isn't for the faint of hearted, because... Um, because there are obviously zombies around, and they know about that. So, the freaks you met near Tristane Alley, black hoods and all, you know the ones I'm talking about, don't tell anyone. Hell, don't even think about them. Avoid them like the plague. The less we know about them, the longer we'll keep our heads. Remember what they discovered at the Hawtree Manor the other day? Same kind of deal here, maybe worse. So you better not get us involved with them. Keep an eye out. If you spot one of them near the hideout, warn everyone and run for your life. I'm dead serious. Should be another readable. No, that's the main gate operation. This guard should head down a side alley there. Which actually gets you to the other entrance that I showed you. down there. He'll be gone for a while. We don't need to go down there at all. Some more food, loaf, cheese, apple, and another readable. Gov, the boss forgot to tell you. Godric used to rewire all the doors and lights around here, but he messed up the portcullis which leads to the sewers. And since he's turned into ashes, we'll have to deal with it for a while. It's still wired to that old stupid security system, meaning it, lock, uh, it locks itself when the power goes out. There's already a locked door down there, but keep an eye on it. For if you see or hear anything coming from below, just shut down the power and the portcullis should seal the access. Sure, the guys out there will end up in the dark, but at least they'll know something's up at the hideout. So let's go down here then. Here's a little refuse pit, it looks like. There's a gold, no, silver nugget down there. <sighs> And this is the door that we picked coming up from the sewers earlier. He's coming back here, so I didn't want to upset him. So this is the uh, a power station control panel. So that is open when we get here. 
because of the explanations in the readable there. So whoever controls it gets uh, got killed, and therefore it's permanently open. But they have a system where they want to close it if somebody gets in trouble. There, okay. So there are quite a few things to pick up in the depot. Or in in the Coghill... I guess this is the Coghill market? Or is this the depot, maybe? Yeah, we're in the depot right now, where the scrappers are. There's also a warehouse to the east. So this is the power station, so we're to the east of that. So we're in the depot right now. Um, so right in here is the armory. Or at least that's what I call it. So in here you can find two water arrows, a rope arrow, two noisemaker arrows, six broadheads, two flash bombs, two mine, a holy water vial, and a breath potion. And here there is three water arrows, a deer leg. There's a speed potion on the wall. And that's pretty much it. I think we're going to reload and follow that guy in there. Now, there's a lot of things to pick up. For us, this, of course, it's loot. This guy has a healing potion on his belt, by the way. There. I thought it was on a lower thought it was on a lower shelf, but there's a goblet in there. Back here's a readable. I think Haskell hides a snare of the loot from us. Did you notice how he barely brings anything to the table every week? Well, yesterday he claims that when we ran from the church, he lost the coins we found in the well near Barrow's End. That slimy, smelly swill. Remember the stables, east of the floodgates? He always volunteers to go patrol and light the torches over there, despite the gut-tearing stench. I bet you this is the place he hides a stash. Given the opportunity, I'll go search the place from top to bottom. And if I find anything of value, he gets an unfortunate neck-breaking accident. By the way, I moved our own stash just in case. It's under the crate in Eldridge Street right now. That is the one we found under the crate. Now, Haskell's stash is in the stables. Now, uh, one time I played, I hadn't read this readable, and the purse, which is where the gems are or the coins are in, wasn't there in the stables. But then when I read this, it was there. So I do think that that spawns as a result of reading this readable. I don't know if the total loot total is adjusted. Maybe if DRK is watching or listening, he can he can chime in. So I'm not sure if the loot total will be adjusted whether you read this or not, or maybe the purse is found somewhere else uh, before you read this. I'm, I'm not sure of that, but I didn't find it one time, and it was because I hadn't read this. See, that's Craster at the back end there. Craster's his name. Over here's a goblet. And a readable. There's a fire arrow in that fireplace as well. Uh, and then we're gonna head back to the... We're not in the shade right now. Seventh month, 834. Still no news of Slint. Taffer's gone for good. I've lost three men these past two months, if we count Godric. I'd better find something good so the others won't plot a mutiny on me. 
ninth month, 834. The boys made a good catch today. They hauled off one of the these decorated street lamps from McDermott Pit. A few lamps here and there shouldn't hurt us. We spent all day scraping the metal out of this little uh, beauty of our own extra ingots. With that lamp, we picked up enough iron to send another shipment to the Ogress. 11th month, uh, 834. I broke my file. I had to use my own fingernails to do the work today. I swear I'll use the merchant's own teeth to do the job when I'm back in Bright Cobble. Vesem whined again about the flickering lights that gave him headaches. I told him to pull his fingers out of his hairy arse and see for himself how to shut them off. Like I'd step out of our shelter in the dark. 12th month, 834. Lummy discovered a hidden wine cellar in Ald Waterway, undamaged and ripe for plunder. He brought back two fine vintages from uh, Salagne and Chateau Grenouillac, uh, 789, and a red or Anonier, perhaps. I did take French back in the day, but it's been a while. 742. Too bad this one tasted like a piss and vinegar. We'll have to go back in there to gather as many bottles as possible, even though they didn't age well. I know a couple of collectors who would sell their mothers for one of these. 14th month, 834. We found how to get into St. Lucard Church today. Morton and Haskell scalded their hands when they tried to lift one of the leaden statues. It became suddenly white hot. Stank of smoke and brimstone. Demonic whispers. We ran like the trickster himself was on our tail. When Lurgar came back, he found the church engulfed in unholy flames with something dancing inside it. We won't go back in there ever again. In the end, we barely brought back some trinkets and a few books. Might be they're worth something. What a waste of time that was. So you can't actually get into the church, but I guess this explains it. They've already cleaned out what was there, so you can steal it from them. Uh, there is a way to get into um, what they have made, what it what is made of the church. Um, you can mantle up in a few areas if you make a little stack. I'll show you that area, but uh, I'm not going to actually go in there. Uh, 15th month, 834. Tallard and Silvio should show up tomorrow. We'll prepare a shipment, uh, shipment 129. Vesem came back this morning, white as a sheet. Someone tried to ambush him in the old power station of Thorn Floodgates. A hair-brained priest wearing a mask who reeked like burrick shite by his own words. It looks like the tales about Father Plotter were true after all. At least we know why the lights are still on in, his, in this ward. Even in death and solitude, the Hamrites work themselves to the bones. So that's interesting. So Father Plotter, we will see. Uh, he is in the he is in the power station. It isn't really in Thorn Floodgates. It's um, it's um, on Farrier Lane. It's up here, but I guess the floodgates lead into there. See, was that it? Yes. Who goes there? So I gotta be a little bit faster there. <coughs> That's the last time yeah, I thought he saw me. there. So we have to wait here and grab Craster's key on the way past. He'll be stationed right here. I don't know, maybe we can listen to a conversation while we do that. There's four broadheads and a mine in this. Hey, Talent brought word from Nail House. Sir Bracken died last Vine's Day. What? Again? <laughs> yeah, for real this time. Uh, I like that weasel. He was such a good man. I used to work for him back in the day. I know. He got no, this is not going to work. We're going to have to get his key. Before we head in there, because his bedroom is right around the corner. So we're just going to hang back here. Yeah, there's a mine... And then four broaded arrows in. 
these two. real this time. Uh, I like that weasel. He was such a good man. I used to work for him back in the day. I know. He got involved with Caswell's guild and tried to outsmart Webster on some shipment. Guess it didn't go as planned. Caswell, huh? I tell you what, as soon as I've paid my debt to Desmond, I'll find my way out to Dayport and take care of those bastards. Going against Webster? Have you lost your mind? I know Sir Bracken's been good to you and you served him well, but when you look to follow someone six feet underground, you serve nothing but your own demise. <laughs> now, now, that's nobly spoken. Did you catch a fever or something? I know you've been stuck in here for a while, but I ain't some tavern wench you need to impress. <laughs> uh, I confess, I mistook you for some maiden, all right. Though not as fair as the rotten pieces of meat I see walking out here. <laughs> Tap off, you lousy loiter sack. So we're gonna have to grab his purse too there. in here. You read these two. I know I got spotted there, but it will reload. Rules to follow. Blame me all you want. I don't care. It's for your own good. Keep all the doors and windows shut at all times. Keep your mouth shut when you're in an, e when you're in an expedition. When you're done with a room or a building, paint a cross on its door. Make sure no one or nothing follows you on your way back to the hideout. Signal your arrival by knocking on the doors or the portcullis three times in a row. Someone will be assigned on guard duty every two days. He must keep an eye on the main gate of the market, the access to the sewers, and the tunnel. So that was the guy out front that we, uh, we saw had that route. Don't touch the lights. There's something worse than dealing with dead walkers, dealing with dead walkers in complete darkness. If you mess up out there, not only you gamble with your life, but you put everyone else at risk. I'll have none of that. One more. All right, you taffing idiots, more rules. Keep all the doors and windows shut at all times. Don't lock your friends outside. Keep your mouth shut when you're on an expedition unless you need to warn the others. I'm done with the bickering. If you find anything valuable, bring it to me and we'll share the loot among us. Don't touch the power stations. Godric messed up in Reuben Street. He was competent enough and got smashed against the ceiling all the same. To help Slint find his way back, we will light the torches and place lanterns in the neighborhood. Okay. So on the table here, there's a couple more readables, but there's also some loot. Two stacks of copper coins, stack of silver coins. Here is a warehouse key that we will need. Huh? Oh, jeez. Maybe I should just I'm gonna lock the door here. Uh, warehouse key, and there are three readables more. I don't care what Alistair told you. He'll pay for it, like it or not. He asked for a larger gear. We spent the week trying to find one. We had to break into the old mill of all places. We lost Slint on the way. Builder knows what happened to him. Then Lummy got injured trying to remove it from the socket. And finally it took us two days to bring it back to the warehouse. And now Alistair doesn't want it anymore? Curse him. We didn't go through all this for naught. Send Taller to ravage his shop and leave him a message. Either he pays or he deals with the mummers and ends up in the sealed quarter, nailed to a door like the old decrepit owl he is. C. Probably Craster. Craster, we finally got some info about the serpentile torque hidden deep within the sealed quarter. I know the tip came from that drunkard Wilbert, however, Messer Rumthord did some research and found an old ledger mentioning it as a wedding gift. According to the info we gathered, it belonged to the McCaffrey family, who still owns a small mansion in a barren side street west of the Cathedral Street drawbridge. Their grandfather 
died at the infamous mass, which started the whole thing. And it's likely the Serpentile Torque is still in the mansion, among other things. I need to plan an expedition over there, but it's way too dangerous at the moment. If you ever try to go closer to the cathedral, try to gather as much information as you can. I know a handful of collectors who would pay a fortune for it. L. Order 97. One frame, three door handles, and two sets of door hinges. 36. Uh, T to Maribel. Two grates, 30. H fins. Three gears, D20, 45. Two sal saladar. Various tools, 65 per crate. Uh, Tybalt functionals. Five cogs and three pipes, 63, undisclosed. Twelve barrel hoops, ten candlesticks, 40, Salpeter's men. Three pounds of copper, 200, undisclosed. Silver, whatever you can find, unpaid, Newmarket Pawnbrokers Guild. As always, keep us any uh, keep us any little gold you find. Tybalt paid us three crates in advance. You better get busy. Al. Okay. This is on the on the uh, bed is a Hillrim pendant. And that is um, another relic. You're gonna learn what. Yeah. Okay. He's on there too. So in this footlocker right here, there is a holy water vial and three water arrows in the same footlocker. We're gonna head into the warehouse now. The warehouse is just this area, this elongated place. There's one patroller in here. I was pretty lucky not to find him right behind the door. So he is over in um, the eastern area. There's one door there to a little refuse area. There's no exit from this place except for the door we came in. Here, three silver nuggets, and then a very cleverly hidden ring underneath those nuggets. Total 2436, and then there is a book. Shipment log, 129. Grates, two pieces. Gears, D20, three pieces, one rusty. Gears, D10, two pieces. Steel frames, one piece. Ornamented frame, one piece. Copper, 4.8 pounds. Silver, 1.2 pounds. One silver ring for Lavina. Iron, 17 pounds. Tools, one crate. Door handles and hinges, 2.4 pounds. Carpenter nails, four pouches. That guy is. Yeah, there he is. He'll come over here and turn around. He has a random patrol, although he has predictable spots where he can end up. But he's the only guy in here, so he's pretty easy. And um, it's not metal or tile in here, so that's good. Hmm. Candlestick, this is a old bracelet, so that's another relic. Huh? 
purse here. <sighs> and here is a bunch of things. Necklace, rug, hammer, one, two, three, four gold, one copper, two silver, one statue, and a book. Builder scriptures. That's um, an item we're going to need later on. Now, it's a little bit unlikely that I know that I'm going to need it now because I haven't gotten the information about it. But it's likely that if you play this mission for the first time that you will bring along anything you can put in your inventory. <coughs> so, that's what I'm doing right now. Good. He went that way. probably heard that door. It's just that sometimes when they're at the mm. end of their patrol, they don't give a first alert, they only give settling remarks. What I mean by that is if there's a patroller and he stops at the end of his patrol for a little bit and then comes back, while he is stopped, sometimes they don't give first alerts. I'm not sure why that is. But then when they get going again, they will settle. They will give a settling remark that indicates that they did alert. And when it comes to doors, they take so long to give a settling remark that it's very likely that you will have saved in the meantime. This is the last entry into Coghill that I haven't shown you. And I'm going to use that just for a moment because I want this... That's something else I was going to show you there. <gasps> there. And there. Two falling, one, one piece of rubble, one a board that falls. So that I would consider a trap. Which means that this is not a way that you can enter for Supreme. Um, and it's not a way that you really can leave for Supreme either. He gives an alert, because now he's at the end of his patrol again. I think this is a good shot over here. Good. Okay. So just as a form of review here, in the um, warehouse we took three nuggets and a ring on the wagon. We took a gold candlestick on a shelf and then a purse uh, in the area where there was some skeletal remains. And then we took a gold statue, a rug, a hammer, a necklace, copper coin stack, four gold coin stacks, and a silver, two silver coin stacks from the shelf. There's a lot of loot in there, and the builder scriptures. So we have a couple more pieces of loot to get on our way out of here. And those can be quite difficult. I'm gonna give it a real save here. We can't get spotted through that window. Hey, what was, was that? that? Okay, that actually is pretty good. They are together. Jump over here. Oops, gotta be careful. That statue right there, don't push into that. Don't bump into it, because then it falls. And that technically would be a supreme bust. 
not technically, it would be. In the fire pit you see there, there's another fire arrow, and there are two pickable foot lockers. I see there. This can be difficult. I maybe should have gotten these pieces of loot when I came in here. There's a piece of loot back here. Artifacts that you can go. I pushed those crates a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, I think this one holds a. I think it holds a healing potion. I think this is the one with loot. So the artifact was worth 20. I guess that's pretty good because that means we can pick the lock <coughs> in, uh, in, sh in shade. Another purse, total 31.50, that was worth 100. <coughs> so I said there was a fire arrow in here too. And this footlocker here I think is empty. I thought right. Hey. So we gotta sneak out now, that's all we really have to do. on his way over here. So we have a couple of things that we've got to return. The Builder Scriptures, after we're done with it, has to be returned. So we have to come back here, but that's okay, because we've got to return the warehouse key to Craster's room and Craster's key to his patrol route. <coughs> so we have to make a stop back here. <coughs> when we are done with our main objective. Follow him down this way. He's gonna come back up here so we can just wait here. Ay, ay, ay. Nice mission, this. Uh, done two undead missions now, fan missions almost back to back. It's not too common. But like I said, I will focus on T2X and Thief 2 from now on. But some of the missions coming up are pretty short. We've got Ambush. Which is a short and not a very good mission, to be honest with you, for Thief 2. <coughs> We've got the redistribution game um, for T2X, which is another very short and very easy mission. So those should be pretty quick to do. We've got eavesdropping after that for Thief 2. Which is okay. This is the window that I said you can use to get into. And of course, I had to drop right when he was outside. That's okay. So you go back this way, you get to the cave where I took that silver nugget. With those falling pieces of debris. So 
but we're going to head north here. Just going to have to wait for him. you got to be careful with this bridge, because that'll break when you go across it. So I take that as a supreme bust, since it's pretty easy to avoid. Now heading north, so we are in our north of Grimro right now. So we're headed in these through these buildings over to the stables. That's right, there is a a sleeping zombie there that doesn't give any verbal cues. He doesn't actually... Oh, There's probably something wrong with the sound, to be honest with you. It's not that he doesn't alert. So, um, if it wasn't for him, we could go take another piece of loot now, but we can't. So here's Haskell, I guess, because we're in the stables, and we are going to steal his loot that was talked about. <coughs> so we're getting up here now, and we're coming out on the eastern end of Thorn Floodgates. This is a pretty difficult area, right here. So you want to you wanna spend as little time as possible on the street level here, but there are not that many pieces of loot. So you can actually head into the canal and use that to get into the power station here. So that's what we're going to do next in order to get to um, Farrier Lane and the Medwick Tower area, which is sort of our last area. But there's a couple of things to do here first. Hey. Oh, wow. He goes that far down. No clue about that. Then we might be able to actually... Sneak by him over here then. You gotta be a little bit careful here because if you go out the to the far northern end of the stables, there is actually a sleeping zombie on the other side of that wall, and he will alert to you because they trigger by proximity. Captain and Whitsimmon could uh, both go sit on a heated plate and sing the tw 48th verse of Sluggermus Maiden for all I care. I ain't going back uh, near the cathedral. That mass was really a mess. I even lost my trouser. However, I came up with the smartest plan of all. The Raporo family abandoned their manor. We could cause a ruckus near McDermott Pit, lead the monsters to Bassett and his men, and discreetly go in the manor and steal everything peacefully while they fight. We could spend so many nights at the pub afterward. You're in? Mm. All right. <sighs> now that's a foul smell. So here is his coins. Dead Burrick as well. Ah. Coming back now. So that coin was, that purse was worth 100. So that, no, 200. That's worth 200. So that's the one that I couldn't find. It was on my second playthrough, so I knew it was there. But I hadn't read that. I hadn't um, <coughs> read that note about it first. So he doesn't alert from that purse missing. That's kind of strange, I think. In which case, it wouldn't be possible to take for Supreme. So I'm happy that he doesn't, but...
So there's a sleeping zombie on the other side there. So we are now uh, in the far northeastern area. You cannot head through this building to McDermott Pit on the east. Huh? Oh, he saw me through the window. Saw me through the window. Couple of patrollers here. Head over here. So I now jumped over to this little corner. So here is a former pub, it looks like. So here's a, oops. Here's a door that we have to pick open. Necessary pick this. a shrine and there's a uh, item called an old M Meister medal and I believe that is the no that is not the last one but it's the sixth one so um, you would reach your objective if you took this one and have taken the ones I've shown you we're gonna take the two diamonds here cannot relock that but that brings us to 3550 and there's only one item left to take. And that is a purse. <laughs> and I believe it is on one of the zombies that come up here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is, it's worth 20. on this guy. So that's 3570. Now we're going to use the canal here. That he hurt, of course. Wait until he moves away a little bit. There, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Let's do that then instead. Don't know why I can't draw properly. Like I mean without noise. Could have seen me there. Probably did actually. That guy. So we're now going th underneath this bridge and over to this area, and we're gonna head north and then go west. You can go over this building or you can go under it. But this is the area that I said was very trafficated. And after we're done with our main objective, more zombies spawn, and it's going to be even worse. Now there is a sleeping zombie in the water here, but I should be able to sneak past him without getting an alert. You can see him there. Stay away from that light. We're going to need to go up there. Beautifully made city, this. Just gorgeous.
stretch. Yeah, I am bright red there, so that's not surprising that he is seeing me. You can see what I mean? If we had used the streets here, that would be near impossible. Because the lights are on. <laughs> and th <laughs> the guy in the power station saw me. He is the guy with the mask that <laughs> it was talked about they lost to. Was it. They lost Gorik? Can't remember the name. <clears throat> they lost somebody. So if we use the streets, we can't go down with this ladder here. <sighs> There's nothing up here, um, nothing to pick up, nothing at all. So. Diff very difficult to sneak when when the floor or the ground is uneven but it so it makes it more challenging makes it more <sighs> he doesn't come in here so I think I'm safe here So this is uh, Father, whatever his name was, the guy that, the Hamrite priest that took his job very seriously. We have to get through that area and that's pretty difficult because it's metallic. He goes in. Apparition here, that's correct. <laughs> this is the power station, uh, or a building just west of the power station. So silver nugget here. The apparition is right above me, so we're actually not going to get to where he is at right, where he is at right now. <laughs> I think that was uh, actually a uh, a hunt maneuver. So now we are actually, we have moved through the power station and we're coming out here, north of Medwick Tower. There are two more of those, I'll show you those, two more of those normal readables, the announcements that have been found in several locations. This is the freakiest thing you could ever imagine. Just watch what he does when he sees us. First time I saw this thing, I thought it was just a normal zombie. And it starts moving like uh, a bug beast and has a very, very fast cycle. 
And I don't know, things that move fast <sighs> is just, to me, more freaky than anything else. The two things that, that scare me more than anything is things that you can't see properly. <sighs> can't tell what is. <sighs> or it's um, creatures that move fast. Because you lose all sense of control. You have, you have no chance of escaping and... <sighs> to get up here. We need to get up to where that apparition is. <laughs> Should be able to do this. <laughs> there, that was pretty slick. You can see that fire shadow in the distance. Okay, he didn't hear that. In here there are two moss arrows. Now he saw us for sure. There's one more piece of loot in there that I want to get. Piece of loot, and this is a fire poker, and that is actually another relic. So that should be the seventh relic. There's one more relic, but that's down in the catacombs. Okay. We're coming up on the most difficult piece of loot in the entire mission. And I'm I'm actually venturing to say it's the most difficult thing we will do. Let alone loot. Wait, there's a piece of loot in here, I think. Yeah. Artifacts. And then here's a fire arrow and a candlestick. <gasps> Okay, so he is coming. So, okay, so let me explain. There's a rug in here. This is the base of the tower. That guy is going to see us now, so we have to move at a different time than this. Yeah. So what we have to avoid, well, you can see the rug in there, maybe. Yeah, you can see it to the right of that little, right by that mushroom. So that fire shadow is facing south, but he can still see us with his peripheral vision. So we have to sneak over on this, in this corner of that ruin, of those ruins, and then we have to slowly inch our way down along the edge and then lean over and take the rug. But we have to do that without getting spotted by this guy or without getting a change in sounds from this person or this shadow. So I'm going to get those two pieces of loot again. I just, and now he saw me. So that was a pretty clear first alert from that. So that's an artifact for 20 and a... Gold candlestick worth fifty here. Make a real save here, I think. I 
3740. That is correct. So I think I'm actually going to reload this because then we're... We're closer. Okay. So he sees that. I don't. I don't think we can do it with this timing here. So let's see. He might come through here, or he might go all the way around there. No, this doesn't work. Where was my... Yeah, no, we have to use that real save, and then just wait a little bit, I think. In fact, let's go for the other... Oh yeah, here's a sleeping zombie. Let's go for the other piece of loot first. Because that is more likely that we can get easily now. <sighs> we need to jump up here and there's a sleeping zombie there. Necklace and a readable. Coleman, I know this is not a mere flu, rather a paganic curse. Master Gilbert told me so before the hammers took him to the Stonemason's Guild. I've never seen him so distressed, even though he's dealt with so many diseases and poisons before. My love, I'm begging you, think it through and uh, renounce this folly. This wall they want to build is a deception. Let's flee together from this accursed city. I don't want to lose you. Griselda. Drop carefully. Down here. Now the question is, can we drop... Can, but we don't want to so that necklace was worth 200 I think so we're s I think we're safe here let's see if we're safe here so we sort of need to have him walk through here, and then we will do that when he has his back turned. I don't know, he takes an awful long time over there. do this while he is going. This is just so difficult that I want to... <sighs> so that is so difficult to do.
go. We got it. That was a lot easier than I thought, than I remember. Awesome. There's one more piece of loot, but that we can get when we leave. Good. Now, we are going to head down into the catacombs, because we have what we need. Um, but I need to place... the arrow... yeah, right here. That's a good placement. Because when we come back up, we will be hidden um, from that lamppost by this rafter. So we're going to go down here and then jump. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So the catacombs is actually completely devoid of enemies until you take the final, or we're going to make it, the final objective. So we can completely roam around here without any worry. But when we do that objective, there will be four haunts that will spawn and many more enemies in the streets. So getting up top will be difficult. There's an apparition right above that will spawn. But now we've done as much as we can before that event takes place. Here's a fire arrow. At the top level, there's uh, a couple of caskets here with some hammers on them. With 75 each. Jordanus F. Magus, Grand Engineer and Blessed Member of the Flame. This, These are referring to authors or people that are helping DRK or have helped DRK in the past, probably. Nice tribute there. Uh, Father Romulus Siculus, probably uh, Skaki. I'm assuming this will be um, a refer reference to Holy Knight of the Steel Summit and Volvidic Philosopher. Brother uh, Gilimus uh, Adafroys, so Scratafroin maybe. Holy Rider of Feculence and Protector of Forbidden Symbolism. And the final one is Edricus uh, Kabikus. So that could be DRK maybe, because uh, he goes by Kub Kubiak. I'm not sure if that's what it is. Grand Architect and Founder of the Soot Order. Probably. Correct me if I'm wrong there. I, I might not know the, the the cryptic messages given there. So we took those four, and we should have 4490 at this point we do. Now this area is obviously uh, based on Strange Bedfellows and the pit. So it's nice to see that mission, which is, in most people's minds, one of the weaker missions of Thief 1. But it's nice to see that being used here. And you can see a body down there, and that, has, that is actually Heron. So we're going to head down here now. So we will need a water arrow, but that we should have. Yeah, we have five to begin with. So, uh, let's actually head all the way down first. So here we have Heron's body. And when we walk close to him, we will check off the objective, finding out what happened to him. He's dead. But when that happens is when the haunts spawn and other enemies spawn. So we will do that last. Now on the table, or the, the tomb here, is um, two rope arrows and a healing potion. Uh, there's also a mine. There's a fire arrow in the brazier there, and that's it. All right, so this is probably the door that was mentioned in one of the readables. Give the first and second sons thy holy tool, for they shall guide the third and open the path. Give the mother thy holy blessing, and the father thy holy scripture, for they shall grant faith to the stranger. So the holy tool that's the two ancient hammers here. The Holy Blessing will be a Holy Water Arrow. And there is a Holy Water Font upstairs. And we have a Water Arrow. And the Holy Scripture is the Builder Scripture that we took uh, at Cog Hill.
Lotivia Missius, holy mother of Triviras, I'm not sure, and great healer of the iron steel. I'm not sure what that word means. Triviras. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's correct. <laughs> but behind her casket is a statue. Worth 75. And here is Father Citrio Gregorius, Order of the Copper Quill, Grand Patriarch of St. Lucard Library. Uh, ease and philosopher and holy founder of uh, Clastricism Doctrine. Okay. Uh, was there something else? No, there was nothing else here. And then there's the holy water font. Uh, we'll go here first. Brother Hadrius Servetus, first son of Ebiticus Servetus, holy knight of piety and grand deacon of Hamrite uh, Elicism. Not sure what all these words mean. They are very Latin based, and I obviously I don't know Latin. Or I don't speak Latin. So we're going to put. You get a little howl there showing that you've done something right. And this is Brother Cephil, uh, Califo Valerius, second disciple of. Sibufus and the blessed member of the Gold Anvil, Grand Apostle of St. Cabrius. So that is the other brother. We will put the other hammer on that casket. And that opened something uh, downstairs. So now you can hear that open fully. Here's another tomb. Brother Burkius Seneca, third protector of the two divines, silver gatekeeper of the order of Klepicism. So there isn't anything to do in there, I think. Let's see here. There is one more item that I didn't show you. There was a rosary. There should be an antique rosary somewhere here. I'm not sure where that is. I actually thought it was in here. Yeah, it is here. Sorry, missed it. So that's an antique rosary. That's the eighth and final relic that you can get for the objective that we do not have. Here are three water arrows, so if you are out, you will get some here. We are going to use that. And we're going to use that on the Holy Mother. There we go. That gives us another sort of verbal cue. So it's not a bust to Supreme to use water arrows as long as it's not done to douse torches or to alert anybody. Uh, even if we didn't have the font here and we had a holy water vial, it would not be a bust to use that either. And then we are finally going to use the the holy scripture or the builder scripture on the father's casket. So now we can actually Go ahead. Now it's safe to go down there, so I believe this is how we can do it. So we can grab the hammers again, because they were only used to open the tomb in the bottom, because we need to return those two. So this is opened, and it's safe for us to enter because we have used the scriptures and we have used the hammers. So we can't return the hammers to the wall, obviously. So we'll just place them here. That is okay. Now when we go in here, um, there is now a floor bridge that has extended because we have used the holy water and the builder scripture. So if you don't do that, then you'll just fall into oblivion here. And you do light up. 
can't avoid that, really. So when we take this, then the door there is going to start to close. Now, I do not consider that a trap, um, because it's just a mechanism that causes the door to close. It's not something that is supposed to kill you or inflict damage. So that isn't what a trap is considered. In fact, it would be beneficial for us if that closed, because then that means that we have um, removed evidence of us being here. But we have to get out quite fast. Damn, that was close. Not really. I leave this place now. Saint Lucard's right arm. So that howl you heard there was not an alert. It was it was just a scripted sound that was given. There is no enemy in there that can see you, but it's just a, a sound given. So now we have stolen the right arm of St. Lucard. Now we are not just ready <sighs> to do that just yet. We will take the Builder Scripture first so we don't have to do that afterwards. All we want to do after we have triggered that objective is get out. We want to do that as easily as possible. So we want to actually use our other rope arrow right here because here we're safe so we can monitor things and uh, then the risky part is getting up, but then we can also climb the top rope afterwards and then head out. So I think we're ready to do this. So everything is closed up here. We return the hammers, took the builder's thing. We have the right arm, we have 45, 65. There's actually only two pieces of loot left in the mission. Definitely gonna make a real save here. Let's see. There goes Heron. Looks like Cuddy will need someone else to do his errands. Did somebody see me there? There goes Heron. Looks like Cuddy will need someone else to do his errands. Okay, so that is that alert there is just a sound they... See, that's an alert, but that first thing was not an alert. There goes Heron. Looks like Cuddy will need someone else to do his errands. There's nobody that saw me there. I'm, I was right below this. There's no way that they can see me. There are four of them. Uh, there is, There are two on the top floor, and then there's one that patrols the staircase up and down. You saw him just on the left there. And then there is one that patrols the bridge and the rooms adjacent to the bridge down here. They get stationed at a couple of locations. For example, the guy that uses the stairs. Then there's one on the top floor circling the pit, and then there is one in with the tombs on the top floor where we took the loot, the hammers. That, that guy is not that important. So we can see the guy in the top there patrolling around. He will probably be up here soon. <gasps> so that was the guy up top that saw me. in that. So it's the guy up top now, okay. There. So now all we need to do really is get up on this rope and then ascend. 
properly. I think this guy goes up the other way. It. So now all we have to do is grab the rope and go upstairs. I'm just going to take a look. Great, that's great. Because that apparition up there, the first time I played this mission, he was second alerted when I came up there. He was in hunt mode. Um, and I had killed all the haunts down here that time. But I didn't think that that sound would travel all the way up top, but apparently it did. I thought that he would spawn directly in hunt mode. And that obviously would be a problem. Okay, I wasn't as concealed as I thought. So we have to jump on that rope when he heads uh, west, when he goes this way. And we just have to hope that there are no other hunts that will see us. So like I said, we only have two pieces of loot left, and then we have to return the keys and the Builder Scripture. But that's all. That is awesome, because that can be so difficult to do. Okay, wow, that went easy. Alright, well that introduces my ghost challenge right now for you guys. Um, you see this little uh, fallen ruin here behind that lamppost? On top you can just see the uh, flames, or the top of the flames of a little bonfire up there, and that has a fire arrow. What I want you guys to do is get from here, um, and pretty much, not exactly in the straight line, but you can't go around, you have to go from this side, over those ruins, get the fire arrow, and then descend on the south side, on the back side, without getting any alerts. So that is the primary problem here, is the flaming spirit, the fire shadow in the tower. But I want you to do that after you've spawned the apparition. So that you also have to worry about him. So um, it's just a matter of going slow and finding the shadows. But it can be a little tricky because the angles are sloped. And um, it's not too comfortable to go around there. So that is what I want you guys to do. So we have to wait here and we've got to go through there. I hope we can go through there. I don't want to go a, a, around where that bonfire is now because that is your challenge to do. So I'm hoping that we can go a different way here. What? might not be able to do this.
Okay. Instead, go this way, which is not desirable, but <laughs> it is what it is. They're seeing me there, yeah. Oh, that was understandable. We just have to find an opening here and drop. Really. So this isn't a problem. We just have to go ang uh, get to the those other two pieces of loot from a different direction, and that's okay. It's difficult here, and now I show you how difficult it is. Let's see. Uh. I think we can drop down onto the ledge. <laughs> That's better because we can get up down there. <laughs> yeah, we can go through there and get up somewhere over there. Now in one of the most difficult spots. <laughs> Let me just see here. Yeah, this is the place to get up, right here. Because then we're right by one of the pieces of loot that I was preparing to get from a different angle, but that doesn't matter. fast I am here, so let's just wait. And there are also a couple of patrollers on that side. On 
the south side. Which you can hear right now. I don't think anybody can see me from here, so... Wow, he saw me there. That's not good. He saw me instantly. Okay, let's see if we can do that a little bit differently then. This is a very good time to go because those two... <laughs> if we do this... Okay, well in here all there is is a readable. So that we don't need to worry too much about. Henry, Kalen. I've been waiting for an hour, I'm off. If you read this, pack your stuff and join me at the canal near Sullen's Gate. I've told you uh, Whitsimmon was lying to us. They lost control of the situation. He sent Hamrites to Manderley's Manor this morning. They're helping his lordship flee the quarter. I've heard screaming from Oldwick Square. Whatever it is, it's coming closer. I'm going to Salt Market to the Green Kingfisher Inn. And if things go sour, I'm off to Lesser Raboda. I've got friends among the eel peelers uh, who can take us there. I'll wait for you as long as I can, but if you're not at the canal by midnight, I'm leaving without you. Sorry, your pal Buckle. Nice little piece of background story on the events that surround the... Yeah, so he doesn't see us there. So we just have to wait for... We need to go in there. We have to wait for... Actually, no. We are going to... Here, back to Med back to Medwick Tower and take the piece of loot there. Let's do that first. You probably noticed too that this mission has a lot of these um, mushrooms that light up. They're probable, but you're not allowed to remove those for. Supreme. So now we are arriving in the southeast corner, Medwick Tower, and the last piece of loot is up here. monitor isn't very good for very dark areas like this. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I didn't make it too bright there. There. Actually, jump into this <laughs> here, and there is a tiara that is worth 125 total, 4690. <laughs> there. 
Now the problem is getting back down. <clears throat> because we can't lead the rope arrow up here. So what I think we have to do... <coughs> Now we have to go back and get that other piece of loot here. Oh, that was you're talking inches. So there are two patrollers here. This one that comes here goes faster. That can be an issue. <laughs> Nobody heard us there. We have to head in here. That's the area. Let me show you. This is where that zombie is, that I said you couldn't hear. Alert, let's see here, so we have to... <sighs> to use a rope to get in here, this is an abandoned building, and this is the last piece of loot I found. Ironically, it's the last one we're taking. When I played, it's the only one that I needed a hint to find. This ring right here, worth 100. Total of 47.90, and that is max loot for the mission. Uh, now, let me show you the other direction here. Here, you can get in through this window, but you cannot pass this room without getting a first alert from that zombie. Um, I don't remember this zombie from my first playthrough, so I thought that it spawned um, along with everybody else when you take the main objective, but that's not true. It's it's there always. Um, I just don't remember seeing it the first time I played it. And now all we have left to do is return the items to... Hog Hill and return the power station key and leave the mission. So we are in uh, Tristane Alley right here now. We're su supposed to head south, so we are in the building to the east. As far as I could detect, we have not taken any first alerts and any supreme posts. This is bad timing here because they're not on the same patrol at all. There is another zombie, a stationary one, that I mentioned earlier, that is just to the west of here, uh, so around this corner. So we have to be slight, a little bit careful of him too. This is better timing now. So we have the two keys, Craster's key and the warehouse key, that we have to return, and we also have the, um, the builder's scripture. There, you can see the stationary 
zombie there. We have to be careful not to get spotted by him here. Actually, sure, if we need. <gasps> if we need a rope arrow here. <gasps> now we're outside the main gate to Cog Hill. Obviously, we're not going to take that way in, but we're going to go in the way we went in earlier. <gasps> now, there are no new enemies inside of Cog Hill, at least not, I don't think so. What I see there. Oh, that was not good timing. I said it was, I was going to say it was good timing with that other guard, because he's down there. Now we have to get into the warehouse first to return the Builder Scriptures. <laughs> this can be a little bit tough now because there's an extra patroller compared to last time we went in this way. I didn't know if he was there. He should be heading out. <laughs> then we can head straight over for the warehouse. So it's going pretty smoothly. The, the mission is a long mission, but we haven't had any major snags. Why? There's something about the movement here that I'm not happy about. If 
you can go back. Oh. Did I just... Not. Well, <sighs> I was a little bit unsure if he had heard the door. It's just that he didn't alert, but the fact that he is alerting now means that he did not alert earlier. <laughs> he has a key too, by the way. I didn't say that, but he has a warehouse key. It's a pickpocket if you're interested in that. Thought I saw. Now this is the worst time to go. I can't go now. <clears throat> I might actually be able to go. What was that? Let's wait. Let's wait. I don't want to take any chances. I'm, I'm like, about to do a perfect supreme run. I shouldn't risk anything. I don't. I don't think I'm definitely not safe here. Hmm. <coughs> 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 I thought I saw it. What? There's a dark spot here, but there's not much. Did I just see what I think I saw? Is it the light lamp, the lantern up there that gets me? <sighs> Probably. Now, luckily, the Craster's key we can just drop anywhere on his patrol route. And his patrol route is pretty long. Let me just double check here. Something there. Yep. I will. And I only have Craster's key left to drop in here. That's not Craster, it's the other guy. Drop it here. As good a place as any. It's it's um Hey buddy, you dropped your key. Hey I haven't ever met or seen a fan mission where enemies alert to objects on the ground. So that would be the first. Me. We actually have an opening here. No, we do not. And there you saw that statue fall as well.
should be it. Now, if we had chosen to unlock the door down to the sewers, we could just leave that way now. But since I don't want to pick that lock, then we have to take a little bit of a different route back. Basically, have to get into the sewers. Okay, they're both coming here, and that is probably good for us. But we have to use the sewers to come home. That That's the safest way, by far. isn't so slow now that I can't... that I can't make this before the other guy turns around. down into that window. That does not work, because there's uh, it sticks out further. Uh. Yeah, that's what I thought. He turns around too quickly. Nobody heard that, right? where that other zombie is. That's right. No, nobody hears that, so we can swim. Just want to be 100% sure here, because now that we get into the sewers, we are... There's an extra patroller in the sewers. guy right here. Very slow. Are we safe here? Controller out here too. So we have to shut off that.
So I do remember that there is another as an apparition that have spawned up on the north side of the broken bridge up there and for some reason that apparition operates the sewer control panel. I think it's a woman actually. And if she operates it, of course that's out of our control, but we have to turn it off because we turned it on. We have to do that. Should be able to get through here. jump over here. <laughs> I can just get a foothold for crying out loud. What was that? Come on. See, it's, it's a problem because... I thought I saw some. Because we have to gauge the... Let me just do that. Actually, let me do a real save here first. Zombie caught me there, and the other. Um, the other thief is on his way, so we're just gonna have to wait him out. We have to return the power station key, that's basically all we have to do, and then get back up to the streets. You know what I think it is? When we close that gate, the apparition actually goes through that gate. And it's set to be able to open that. <sighs> Did I get an alert there? hoping he wouldn't walk that way. But actually go back to where he came from there. This is 
is a problem because he can't get past us here. Is that you? Move, and you're dead. Don't try it. Freeze! We're not dark in there either. Yeah. We might need to wait for another cycle here. Because obviously we need to get in there. We need to drop the key or we need to get to safety. So yeah, we're just going to have to wait for that card to come back. We'll enjoy the solitude of Aberton Street in the meantime. I thought he was going to go... Okay. First alerts there. Drop the key, close the door. I got my rope, right? Because I've got two ropes right now. So here you can drop if you drop onto the sloped side down there then you won't take any damage <laughs> awesome awesome oh okay <laughs> Can't do that because we didn't close the door. <laughs> that was ironic. <laughs> That's just yeah. <clears throat> we can't we can't leave without closing that door. So I didn't know. Th I thought that it. I thought that it actually ended after I got out of the doors. But you don't even have to open those doors. Great, thank you, Dr. K. One hour, 48 minutes, 21 seconds. Found 4790, loot out of 4790. Pockets picked six out of eight. So those were all, uh, no, they weren't all uh, purses. They were quite a few purses, but there was at least Craster's key we, we picked from his pocket. So five purses. Locks picked 11, that's the lowest I can get it to. Um, and still finish um, Perfect Supreme Ghost successful. No backsteps, no knockouts, no damage dealt taken or healing taken, nothing and nobody killed. So that was, yeah, a, a successful perfect Supreme Ghost run, as far as I could tell. I don't think there was any busts there. We didn't have to skip any loot, so there's nothing much else to say about that mission. Um, I gave this one a 27 out of 30 for that contest. That was out of 30 points. 
Uh, I can't remember what I gave it in the various categories, but it was Thunder 6. The Be Burning Bedlam that I just played um, was also from that contest. That I gave 26 out of 30. So this one just edged out Burning Bedlam. I played a few other missions from that campaign. Rose Garden, I think I gave 28 or 29 out of 30. So that was uh, that's the best mission I've played so far. But there's many, many missions I haven't played for that contest. So hopefully one day I will get to it. There we go. Yeah, I really like this one. Non-linear, atmospheric, very well-designed city. Uh, it's very maze-like, so it takes some time to get into the layout. But the map is very helpful, and a lot of readables, a lot of backstory. Just a very complete mission, complete undead mission, which I enjoy. Yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it wasn't too long. And I will see you guys back next time for Ambush for Thief 2. Until then... Have a good day. Bye-bye.